Hey guys, it's Andrew. In my previous video, I showed you how I'd been playing around with the Ramda library, which is a functional programming library in JavaScript. If you go watch that video, you'll see how this code here, and specifically this function at the end, map permissions to lists, converts this permissions structure here to a set of lists where each group is the key, and then there is an array of objects that have a value key, a checked key, and a label key. And I mentioned that I needed to convert from this structure to the new structure so that I could display them in a React component, specifically a list of checkboxes. So I figured I would go ahead and show you how I used this new structure in React because I was actually able to use Ramda quite a bit inside my React component, which is something I'd never tried before. So here we've got the beginnings of a checklist component in React. Uh, notice that it is going to be a pure component, so we don't actually need to create a React class. We can just create a function that's going to return uh, some values here. Notice down here where we're rendering, we're passing it this data where we take our permissions object that I have up here at the top, and we pass that to our map permissions to lists function here that uh, we wrote last time. So of course that means this checklist function here needs to take a props object with one data parameter. And now let's see how we can use Ramda to display our checklist. Let's begin inside of our checklist function here by writing a couple smaller functions. What I'm gonna to want to do is display each one of the groups of permissions individually with an H3 header. So we'll have an H3, our list of checkboxes, another H3, and another list of checkboxes for each one of the groups. So let's write a function here called H3. And this will just take a string to be the text in the H3. And this will just return an H3 and we're gonna give it a key, which can just be the string itself. And we need to give it the key because of the way that we're gonna combine some of these React elements. React will complain if they don't have keys. So let's go ahead and give that a key. And then the text of course will just be the same string and we'll close our H3. Now let's also create a list item. And our list item function is going to return our list item with the checkbox inside of it. And this is gonna take as its single parameter one of our items. And these items are the ones from within our group arrays. So it's gonna be an object that has a value key, a checked key, and a label key. So what we can do in here is we'll return a list item. And this list item of course will need a key. So the unique value we can use here is item.value, and item.value is actually going to be the unique identifier from our permissions object. So there's our value, but now in here we want a couple of things. Let's first have our label component. Inside of our label we put our input, and this is the way you do it with a checkbox. And we'll need a couple of properties here. First of course the type is going to be checkbox. The value for this checkbox is going to be whatever item.value is. The checked property of course is going to be whatever item.checked is, and that's going to be a boolean, true or false. And then let's close off this input, and also inside of our label here, let's add item.label, which is the third property that this item object has. So this is how we will generate the list items. And of course, notice that these are pure functions, which is kind of one of the core ideas behind functional programming in the style um, we're trying to learn here. And a pure function, of course, is just a function where if you pass in the same input, you will get the same output. Now, of course, we can't have a list item without a list object. So let's go ahead and create an unordered list class. And this is going to take a list of items. And we can just return our unordered list. And in here, we can do items.map and we will map it across our list item function here. And we'll go ahead and close our unordered list. Finally, let's create a function that will wrap anything in a div, and we'll call this function div. It will take two properties, the children and a key. And so all this is gonna do is return a div with a key of key, and it's going to put the children inside of it. All right, so with these four functions in place, we can go ahead and start transforming the data that we receive into the JSX structure that we want. So just a reminder, the data that we have is going to be in the form of an object. We're going to have a key, like group one, and then we're going to have an array, and inside this array we'll have objects that have a value key, a checked key, and a label key, as you know. So we're starting off with an object here. So let's create our function here, we'll just call it fn for now, and we can do a ramda.compose here. 
to compose some functions together. And the first thing we're going to do is two pairs. And this will convert this from key values to tuples or arrays with two values in them, the key as the first item and the value as the second item. Now this is actually really neat because when we have the key as the first item, the key is actually what we want to use inside of our H3. And the array as the second item in our tuples is what we want to pass to our UL here because that's going to create our list of checkboxes. So basically what this means is we have a data structure that looks like uh, the H3 value as the first item and the UL value as the second item. So what we basically need to do is call the first value in this array with our H3 function and the second value with our UL function. And we can do this with a function that Ramda has called zip with. Now, if you're familiar with zipping two arrays together, basically what you can do is take two arrays and you can zip them so that the first item in both arrays becomes a subarray inside your final array. Basically, if we had this array here and we had another array here, which is the H3 function and the UL function, if we were to zip these two arrays together, the result would be an array with smaller arrays inside of it. And the first array here would have the first value from the first array and the first value from the second array, just like that. So we could have pairs like this. However, what we can do with the zip with function is choose exactly how we want to combine the first value from the first array with the first value from the second array. Zip with takes a function as its first parameter and it will pass these two values as the parameters to that function. And then whatever we get back will be our value in the new array that zip with returns. So what we can do is as the first parameter to zip with, we can pass r.call. Ramda's call function expects a function as its first parameter and an argument as its second parameter. And it will return the result of calling that function with that argument, which is exactly what we want to do, right? We want to take our h3 function and call it with our h3 value. So when we're calling zip with here, we're going to pass as the first parameter r.call. And then as the second parameter here, we need to pass an array of our functions. So we can just pass in h3 and ul. And of course, the results coming out of two pairs will be passed to zip with. However, that's not exactly right because the result coming out of two pairs here is our big array, right, that we get after calling two pairs. So it's our array here that has an array as the first value. So what we need to actually do is map over the result of two pairs. So let's wrap our zip with in a call to ramda.map, just like that. And now it's going to map over each one of the key value pairs that we have, or each one of our lists. So we're going to map over each one of our key value pairs, and we're going to zip the key and the value with the h3 and the ul. And how do we zip them? We're zipping them with the call function, which will call these functions with whatever the parameters we have are. And that's either going to be the string key for our group name, or the array of our list items. Okay, so we're actually making excellent progress. So that means at this point in our compose, what we're going to have is an array of arrays, and each of those inner arrays is going to have an H3 React component and a UL React component. So now we just want to wrap each one of those in a div, right? And let's break this onto a couple of lines here so it's a little easier to read. So we want to wrap each one in a div, so we're going to call r.map on div. But the problem here is that when we do this, Ramda's map function does not give an index by default, and so there's not going to be any value for the key here. So what we need to do is call a map function that does include an index. Well, this is easy to do in Ramda. We can just call the add index function, and we call that on the map function, and this will return a new function, map, which includes the index. So now when we call div, it will include an index which we can use as a key. Now, I should mention that the first time I wrote this, I wanted to compose the calling of div and the calling of zip with together, so we only have one map, which means we only loop over our values once. However, if we do that, there's no way for us to give div here an index. And so since the chance of you having a huge enough list to actually cause two callings of map to make a big difference is pretty slim, I just decided to call map twice, once without the index and once with the index. So at this point in our composition, we have an array of div objects. And so now we just want to wrap that whole thing in an outer div, which is the object we want to return. 
So what we can do is call our div function here to wrap all of those inner divs. However, once again, we have the index problem. When we call div here, the array of children will be passed as a first parameter, but there's nothing that we can pass as the second parameter. Now, this is actually a trickier situation because we want to curry, of course, as we've been doing all the way along, but we need to curry the second parameter and not the first one. So I think there are a couple of ways we can do this with Ramda, but the way I'm going to do is by calling Ramda.flip, and we're going to pass it that div function. And what Ramda.flip does is simply reverse the order of the first two arguments that you pass to div. So now Ramda.flip returns a new function which expects the key first and the children second. So that's great, we can just pass it a key, and it doesn't matter what it is, just any value in there will work. And that is actually all we need to do. Once we wrap everything in a div, we're ready to actually return that div. So down here in our return statement, instead of returning an empty div, let's just call our function and we'll pass it data. And you'll remember this data is the data that we get passed into our checklist up here as a parameter, the one prop on our checklist here. And so really that should be all we need to do. Let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we have our group of checklists showing up over here on the right. And if I look at our permissions object here, you can see that group one has permission one true, group two has permission two true, and general permission three is also true. And you can see that those are the boxes that we have checked. If I was to go ahead and let's add another one here, let's add perm five, and we will make this true. And now I go ahead and run it. You can see it's added to our list and it is checked. Now, if I actually pop open a console, you'll notice we have a couple of errors here from our renders, and we have, you have provided a checked property to a form field without an on change handler. And this is going to render a read only field. Now, this means of course that we cannot change these checkboxes. If I go ahead and click them, you can see that nothing happens. And that's because our inputs here do not have an on change handler. So this was the next problem I had to face, writing an onChange handler, and I wanted to do that in a functional way using Ramda. So I'll show you that in my next video.